लाइव विदाउट लाला जी बर्थ मिस्ट्रीज एक्सप्लेन इट इज सेट दैट द बर्थ ऑफ लाला जी वॉज प्रिडिक्टेड लॉन्ग बिफोर बाई थर्टी थर्ड शेख हजरत अबुल हसन नसीर आबादी then when the time for his advent was near a mystic wrapped a blanket wrapped mystic appeared at the door step of durga devi lala ji's mother who is this blanket wrapped mystic who on appearing at the door step ask for food only here we stop first thing that i had mentioned earlier no prediction can be possible or made it is irrelevant there are two sides of the same coin first is the master who makes a promise that i will assume the birth again only for that person a prediction can be made it can be understood by a simple example you are living in a particular country i made a promise to you that i will visit you next next year so as the time of my visit comes nearer and nearer the arrangements will start making you will start making all the arrangements for my visit so then a forecast comes in in that matter so hazrat abul hasan nasirabadi so the it was the mughal influence the mughal empire was in decline the influence was declining more people from other religious sects hindus were approaching the sheikhs and the incidents took place hazrat mazhar mirza ne jana and his sheikh from then the things started changing so this blanket wrapped mystic who was this blanket wrapped mystic who was never seen before and never seen afterwards you have to understand one thing when an individual attains to enlightenment or in sufi terminology the aspect of enlightenment is when the drop merges into the ocean fana and when the ocean merges into the drop so there are two stages fana and baka so fana is of two types fana fuel shake and fana fuel murid the murid dissolves in the shake that is drop merging into the ocean and simultaneously the other side of that is ocean becomes drop fana fuel murid and when these two incidents complete two aspects is complete that is known as total fana then comes baka and it is in that state every individual who is awakened attains to this state of fana and baka then he is aware of things that are happening which humanity the man who does not understand 
considered as mysteries. So the appearance of the blanket wrap mystic was nothing else but Hazrat Sheikh Abul Hasan Nasir Abadi, who appeared as mystic, as a blanket wrap mystic to complete that process. There are many incidents that happened. It is about the 23rd Sheikh of Naqshbandi Tariqat, who was the first who was sent by his Sheikh, Hazrat Amkan Kirazi Allah Ta'ala Unu, to India. His name was Hazrat Baki Bullah Rahmatullah. One day while he was having a talk, a person asked, what is the difference between Fana and Baka? So the Sheikh said, one who comes to offer my janaz, namaz a janaza, you ask him this question. Time went on. The person from time to time remembered that. Then it happened, he came to know, he heard that Hazrat Baki Willah entered into cosmic womb or Risal Farmage. Then for his preparations were made for his namaz -e janaza A person came with face covered, it can be with his turban or with a mask and his, he came riding the horse. He offered namaz -e janaza for the Baki Villa and was pacing, going back. The man remembered that and he held on the reins of the horse and he said, Hazrat Bakiwillah had told me the person who offers my namaz -e janaza, you ask him this question. He raised his cover from his, that was covering his face it was Hazrat Baki Willah Razi He said, the one whose namaz, namaz janaza I offered was Fana. And the one who offered namaz janaza is Bakar. Simultaneously, it happened. So, although Hazrat, this is how it happens. This in general terminology, we call it astral traveling. At times, people come to me and they say, I do astral traveling. The person is saying, the master does not deny or anything. He knows the truth. So he just let it happen. So these are the two stages the moment one attains to enlightenment, the fana and baka becomes very easy. It is like you can frequently attain to that state. It's not that master is doing it. It is happening through him. He is an instrument. And he is aware while it is happening. And he is aware when it happens. So, Hazrat Abul Hasan Nasir Abadi, he made the prediction. It was his responsibility to see, to prepare the womb. So Durga Devi was a pious lady, very religious, coming from the Hindu background. So reading the Ram Charitmanas, the portrayal of Ram, and going to the regular communes of the saints was her pastime. Her husband, Chaudhary Harvakshrai, was at a high post, but he was involved in drinking, eating, and all these kind of activities. Durga Devi's kitchen was separate. So when this blanket wrapped mystic, Sheikh Abul Hasan Nasir Abadi, in that garb, appeared and asked for fish, the 
Durga Devi's kitchen was vegetarian. There was no talk of meat. So she asked her brother-in-law to inquire if fish is available in her husband's kitchen. So it came to know that someone has sent a special offer of fishes, fish that has been prepared specifically spicy. So she offered that to the blanket wrapped shake along with Puri's puffed Indian bread. And he ate. So she had a maid who was very dedicated. He asked the sheikh, my, she asked, my madam has everything. She doesn't have children. If you can bless her with children, it will be a great benediction. And he loudly said, a do and disappeared in the thin air. It, since it was the estate of Baka of Hazrat Bahaud Hazrat Abul Hasan Nasir Abadi, it cannot be known where that disappeared. Many incidents like these I can narrate and it happens in the life of the masters. Some time ago, one of my friend who is initiated by Sheikh Nazim Adil of Naqshbandi Hakini Order of Cyprus was visiting the shrine of Hazrat Ubaidullah Ahrar. He is the very important Sheikh of Naqshbandi Order. He told me, so I said, when you are going, take me with you. So he said, okay. He went to the shrine, he will pay the obins at the tomb. Behind that there was a wall and on the other side was a Muslim graveyard. He saw a mad looking man was sitting there and while this person from Washington DC, Asif was in meditation, the person, the mad looking person came and sat next to him during the Marakuba. He offered Surah Fatiha and thereafter he carried him to the inner sanctorium known as Chilla, the room where Hazrat Ubaidullah used to meditate. And there again did the meditation and raktas. And thereafter in a blink, the man disappeared in the thin air. Thereafter, when on return, Asif told me, so I said it was Hazrat Ubaidullah Arar who gave you the presence, his presence for you. He was available to you for that moment. Another incident happened. When Sheikh Brijmohan Lal entered into Samadhi in Mumbai and his body was to be brought to Lucknow, there was no direct train between Lucknow and Mumbai that time. So the train has to, the connecting train has to be from the Jhansi Junction. So it happened a group of people, Onkarnath, my uncle, my father, Lakshmi Sahai, and one other family member, the three of them went to bring the body of Sheikh Brijmohallal, was handed over to him at the Jhansi Junction. So while he was going, it was, he was sitting, Omkar Nath, my uncle was sitting, then the people who was with him said, you better take a sleep and you have a long days. So he sat. He went to take a nap. And in the nap, he saw Sheikh Brijmohan Lal appeared. He said, why are you worried? I was just sitting next to you. While Sheikh Omkarnath was sitting on the, the 
the lower seat, a man came and sat next to him and started consoling a father-like presence. So when he saw that vision, he immediately got up and asked everyone where that gentleman who was sitting here is gone. The train did not stop and nobody knows where that person has disappeared. This was the state of Pana and Baka. Sheikh Brijmohan Lal had attained Pana. So through the other realm, other shore of enlightenment, Baka. Because enlightenment, the river of consciousness cannot flow without two shores. Pana is one shore, Baka is another shore. Pana is of two types, Pana fuel murid, Pana fuel shake and Pana fuel murid. And this is Baka is Baka be Allah. You live by the divine will. Another incident happened. The number of incidents happened with the masters, between disciples. I recall with Sheikh Omkarnath, it happened that a person came with the final relics of his father, who was a devotee of Sheikh Bridge Mohan Lal, who passed away, and he came to the city of Kanpur where Sheikh Omkar Nath lived, and somebody told him, You cannot carry the relics of a person to somebody's house. So, better you submerge into the river Ganges that float in Kanpur before you go to this place. So, he went there. So riding the three-wheeler raksha, the, the man driven, and he fell from there. So he got his shoulder dislocated. All of a sudden, a person appeared from nowhere. He said, go to, he called a particular name, you go to Kallu Pahalwan. Kallu was the name, Pahalwan means a strong man, the wrestler type. He will fix your shoulder. But he did not pay attention. He went and did the pain continued. The same time that person again appeared, he said, I told you to go to Kallu Pahalwan, go immediately. So he went and he, being the chiropractor, the shoulder was, dislocation of the shoulder was fixed. After that, he came to the room and I was that time kind of a security guard. Everyone will come through me because I was the gatekeeper living with my uncle. So he told me this incident. I said, this was nothing else but the shake himself. And he, the, this is Baka. So the master are aware that it happens and those who are very close to him, they know that it is this. The moment he said, I said, this is not, nobody else but Sheikh Omkar Nath who appeared to you in that vision and told you that. Many incidents like that. So Hazrat Abul Hasan Nasir Abadi appeared at the doorstep because he made the prediction before that Lalaji in the past life which was between 300 to 325 years back, made a promise that I will come back again. Now the time was drawing near for his presence, so somebody has to make the arrangements. A person like Lalaji or of that nature cannot enter an ordinary womb because a person who is enlightened, has attained to a higher consciousness. It is the ordinary womb that we see around is not suitable. When you look at the birth of Gautam Buddha, look at the birth of Ubadullah Arar, look at the birth of Ramakrishna Paramahans, look at the womb of 
Lalaji, uh, his mother, look at the womb that was created for the birth of Sheikh Brij Mohan Lal. All these are, has to be prepared because through their womb, ordinary consciousness or cannot enter and be born as a living being. So, Master, somebody has to make the preparation. For the birth of Lalaji, it was the responsibility of Abul Hasan Nasir Abadi to make the necessary arrangements. Durga Devi was pious and very religious and devoted person. So she was doing her own preparation. And that appearance of shape, the blanket wrapped mystic, was the final to prepare. And then he blessed that two children, two sons will be born. Whereas in case of Brij Mohan Lal, it was totally a different kind of a thing. It was that Chachaji's Chachaji did not have any children, so his in-laws were carrying him to Rameshwaram, the holy place of Hindus in South India. And it was said, it was the belief of Hindus that whenever anyone offers prayers at, the, at Rameshwaram, his wish is fulfilled. Same time, Lalaji Sheikh Malana Fazl Ahmad Khan appeared, came, and seeing everything, he inquired, what is this all going on arrangement? So with tears in his eyes, Lalaji said, Hazrat Nanne, as he used to call him lovingly, he doesn't have children. So his in-laws are taking him to Rameshram for prayer. So Hazrat Maulana Fazl Ahmad Khan asks for water in a bowl. So always the energy is transformed, transferred by the shake in a metal cup and the metal is a conductor of um, the energy which is electricity in one form and he said the god that is there is here also his uski kudrat mahdood nahi hai his energy field is not restricted to any particular place or space once you are aware you are you can get can feel it anywhere, wherever you are. Wherever you are, you can feel it. And he cast his vision, his energy field into the water in the cup and told Lalaji to take it to the Beti, the Lalaji, Chat Brijmohan Lal's mother, and give it to her. When after some time, there was a danger of miscarriage. The message was sent by Lalaji. The distance between Fatehgar and where Maulana Fazl Ahmad Khan used to live was three miles. So the, the one devoted servant who stayed at the house of Lalaji, they used to call him respectfully Chittar Kahar. Kahar means servant. Chittar was his name. So it was with respect, the younger ones used to call him out of respect by different salutation, different ways. He carried it and when the message reached, he sent a reply immediately. When God has accepted the prayer of this humble servant, there should be no fear of any kind. I'll be blessed with a grandchild and I name his bridge Mohan Lal. This was the Fana and Baka. So, Abul Hasan Nasir Abadi made the final arrangement for the advent of, because there was no sheikh around Brijmohan, around Lalaji and Chachaji, as it was in the case of the birth of Brijmohan Lal. So, the arrangement was to be made differently. And the arrangement as it was made thereafter, Lalaji and Chachaji, the two brothers were born 
18 the 2nd of February 1873 Lalaji was born two and a half years after 7th of October 1857 his younger brother Raghavar Dayal was born the mother nourished and nurtured and cared for the two children up to the age of seven. When Lalaji attained the age of seven, his mother passed away. Thereafter, Lalaji says, at the age of seventeen, the God took care of me through my mother, who my the, the first glance, the seed of Awakening was sowed in me, in the womb of the mother and in the company of my mother and that warmth nourished and nurtured for seven years. Thereafter existence make me surrender to Mujassim Tarike Marfat these are the different salutations for the master in the company of Hazrat Abu Hasan, Hazrat Maulana Fazl Ahmad Khan, who nourished and nurtured, and from the very beginning he sowed, he infused into my ears, your life is for the manifestation of truth. Your life is or the manifestation of truth and thus the mystery and the fish. Fish is lives in the ocean. Fish lives in ocean. It cannot exist outside. There is amphibian, the creatures who live in ocean as well as in on earth but the fish the way it grows there are different stages and if you look clearly the fetus growing into the womb it is like that the the shapes the different stages of its growth is like what we give example with that pool. These are the initial forming stages of the growth of the fish. And fish knows nothing else. Fish, the above is this water, below is the water, inside is the water. It is symbolic. A man of awareness lives in the ocean of consciousness. Consciousness surrounds him. It is above him, it is below him, he drinks consciousness, he eats, feeds on consciousness, and everything is consciousness's way of nourishment for him. Just as fish draws everything, everything nourishment, not from outside, but through the consciousness. The, the When you keep the fish in the water tank, fish tank, the feed is thrown into the water and whatsoever thrown into the water, which is like consciousness for the fish, fish eats there. Whatsoever is provided to the fish through the consciousness, the water of consciousness, it lives on and feeds on. An awakened one feeds on through the, the consciousness becomes his life force, the solid food, the liquid. So the, it is transformed. Consciousness is his food, living food. This is why the significance of fish, asking for the fish, and two fish was offered to him. So two fish were represent, representing the birth of Lalaji and his younger brother Chachachi. These two were very important. So these were the mysteries 
At that time, when Sheikh Brijmohan Lal was writing the life history, the biography of Lala Ji and Chacha Ji, there was no need for unraveling these mysteries. But as time goes on, it becomes relevant and it comes the responsibility of next one who is coming because the past is guides the present. The past masters are my guidance and I am inspiration. The present inspires the others. The present inspires the future. Those who come after me the current, the present master is inspiration for them because he bridges the past and the present. Past that is gone in the womb of the time and the present that is yes to evolve out of the womb of, of time. He connects the two. So, at times it becomes relevant to explain that. This is the unraveling the mysteries of the birth of Lala Ji. As this is the weekend, Saturday, Sunday and Monday, when I will speak on various aspects to unravel the mysteries of Lala Ji, I will explain tomorrow's session the enlightenment of Lalaji. Enlightenment as such, the concept exists in other paths, Buddhism and so, does not exist in Sufism or Islam. But if you understand what enlightenment really means, then you know it does exist there. So that I will explain and then another session will come, the meeting between Lalaji and Sheikh Maulana Fazl Ahmad Khan. That will be presented under the series Meeting the Incredible by another person of German origin, Nivedita. She has presented yesterday's the tribute to Lalaji under the series Meet, Meeting the Incredibles. So enough for now.